Hello and welcome here to the presentation of the Dragonfly 32 range. We're here in uh, Denmark uh, by Quarner Boats and I'm the CEO and owner of Quarner Boats where we build and design the Dragonfly trimarines. Today we will show you the, the, the Dragonfly 32. This boat is past the trailer range. So this boat is, uh, is a much bigger boat. For a 32 feet boat, this is a, a big piece of kit. You can go sailing, of course, coastal, but this is also for, for offshore cruising and racing. So you can sail the boat still easily, single-handed with family and friends. You can uh, also easily, if you have a nice afternoon, just take a quick sail. This is easy to set up in yeah, when you use take five minutes, but in 10 minutes you are, you are on, uh, on the water, easy to fold in and out. And this is, of course, also easy with the electrical winches to, to fold every time you go into your slip. I'll introduce you to my son, Peter. He will uh, take you around on the boat and uh, show you all our crazy details. So uh, have a long cup of coffee ready. And uh, Peter, will you take them through all the gimmicks of this? Of course. Fun boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Peter Corning, and I would now like to tell you a lot about this wonderful Dragonfly 32, tell you about all the little details and features here on board. The boat comes in two versions. It comes in an evolution version, is the one you see here, and then it comes in a touring version. The difference between the two boats is that here in the evolution we have this newer wave piercing design where it's more traditional, a little bit more narrow floats on the touring version. The other difference is that it's two different heights on the rig. Both rigs are made in carbon, so the only difference is the height of the mast and of course the, the type of sails coming with the Evolution and the touring version. I have quite a lot of experience myself sailing this Dragonfly 32. I've sailed uh, several regattas and I've also sailed coastal sailing and also blue water sailing. You can easily take the boat here out sailing blue water because the boat is CE category A. The boat is very powerful and you can expect up to 22-23 knots of, uh, of boat speed but also normal cruising speeds around 10 to 17 knots. And it goes both for the touring and the evolution version. Generally about some facts here on board the Dragonfly 32 is of course it's 32 feet. When it's uh, unfolded here, as you see, it is 8 meters wide. When it is folded, it is only 3 meter and 80. Fully rigged, the boat is around 3.8 ton, depending on how much equipment you want inside the boat. As all the other Dragonfly models, the Dragonfly 32 comes standard in a white gel coat color. But you can of course get the boat in any color you like. The boat I am on now has the optional copper coat anti-fouling. But you can of course get a normal anti-fouling in any color you like. As you probably already have noticed, the boat has been in the water and that's why the anti-fouling looks a little bit different. The Dragonfly 32 has been on the market for a while now and we have so far built 68 Dragonfly 32s, both the Touring and the Evolution version. I'm now here on the bow to show this pulpit arrangement we have here. As you can see, it protects you quite good when you are up here working while sailing, so you feel great and, uh, and protected. Underneath the step here, you can see we have the navigation lights, and down here we have the, uh, the stainless steel mooring cleat. The pulpit here runs all the way to the trampoline, so when you're walking around, you're also protected here on the bow of the boat. For the pulpit, we also offer an optional foldable bow ladder to give you greater access to the dock. Here on the bow, we of course also have the attachment of the uh, forestay. And it's actually going through the deck here and then it's attached inside of the, uh, of the anchor locker. It's easy to access and the furler here is on top underneath the, uh, the step here where you have the fur line attached. The fern line is led directly back to the cockpit, so it's easy to handle and operate. Here at the very, very end of the, of the bow, we also have the anchor system. You operate the anchor from the anchor locker, where we have a remote control. So it's actually just to push the button down. And as you can see, it runs very smooth and directly into the water without uh, hitting the, uh, the, the freeboard of the boat.
Right next to the anchoring system here on the bow of the Dragonfly 32, you see the retractable bowsprit. Here on the Evolution version, it is made out of carbon fiber, but an aluminum profile on the Turing. The bowsprit extends to two meters length. Now I would like to demonstrate how to operate this retractable bowsprit. It's done from underneath here, inside of the anchor locker. We are actually just push it out, a little bit out, all the way. And as you can see, it's going out in a wrong angle. But when we get it out in position, we can move forward, direct it and put it into place. Then we have a pin that you put in the bowsprit here to lock it in its position. Afterwards, you have to lock the bowsprit in position on the side stays out on the port wing. Here on the end of the bowsprit is where we attach the extra sails. So here we attach the optional code zero, here in the middle eye you see here. And as you can see here, we have a, a tag line for the asymmetric Jenica. The tag line runs directly back to the cockpit so you can handle and operate the asymmetric Jenica from there. Here on the Dragonfly 32, we have some very nice shapes here on the main hull. It's called a shine, and we actually use it to keep the spray away from the boat so we can keep a very dry boat when sailing. The other thing is that we also, due to this shine, can have a, a wider berth in the front cabin. This gives a more spacious feeling inside of the main cabin so you can sleep two persons in the front cabin. With this shine, we also keep a very narrow main hull, which means that we have less wet surface and less boat to push through the water so we can have a higher performance. Here on the freeboard, we have a port light. It's an option, but it gives great light into the front cabin so you have even more spacious feeling. Here on the Dragonfly 32, we offer an optional retractable bow thruster. As you can see, we have made it retractable to keep less drag when the boat is sailing in the water. And it's also easy to use and easy to operate directly from the cockpit and makes it way more easy for you to maneuver the boat inside the harbor. Here on the side deck, on each side of the boat, you'll find two lifting eyes. And in the same position, in the back of the boat, we also have two lifting eyes. That means to lift the boat, we have a sensor lift with four lifting points. You can also choose to lift the boat in a travel lift. And as you can see here, we have marked the position where you should place uh, the straps that goes underneath the boat. It's important to mention that these straps is going underneath the main hull and that you lift under the main hull and not on the outside of the floats. We also have these marks in the back of the boat. Right next to the lifting eyes here in the front, we have an outlet here and an inlet on the other side in the same position. The outlet here is for gray water and the inlet on the other side is for fresh water. Here I'm standing underneath the trampoline of the Dragonfly 32. I just want to show you this stainless steel hinge that makes it possible for us to fold in and out the boat. It's bolted directly into the internal glass fiber bulkhead. The lines you see here coming out of the pocket are the lines for the swing wing system to make the boat fold in and out. The lines are led direct into the cockpit and I will of course show you later how to operate them. The hinge you see here is exactly the same setup you see on the other three points, so on the aft wings, the two aft wings, and the other side in the front ring. Under each wing of the Dragonfly 32, you'll find a water stay. The water stay keeps the boat in one piece and is a very important structural feature here on the boat. Each water stay is connected into the internal glass fiber bulkhead. And on the other end, it is attached with a thread into a stainless steel fitting inside of the wing that I will show you later. Here on the front side of both wings, you'll find a metal eye. The metal eye here has several functions. Here we have the attachment 
for the bow spread to lock it in position with the side stays. The green and the white line you see here is actually an extent from the barber hole. This you can use for the asymmetric drenica to attach this one to the tack of the asymmetric drenica so you can pull it out on the leeward side of the boat to get it out of the wind shadow from the mainsail. Then you have a lot more efficient asymmetric drenica when going dead downwind. This metal eye you also use for the anchor bridle. The anchor bridle prevents fish tailing while you're anchoring. I've now moved to the bow of the outrigger here to tell you a little bit about this wave piercing design. The wave piercing design makes it much easier for the outrigger to cut through the waves and it actually doesn't care whether it's above or underneath the water. Additionally, we get a lot of buoyancy in the front part or in the bow of the, of the outrigger compared to the traditional design. With this wave piercing design, we have chosen to assemble the top and the bottom part here in the waterline. This means that you get the widest point of the float in the waterline, so you have a lot of buoyancy quicker than with the de traditional design. As you probably have noticed, the outrigger here is actually more forward than the actual main hull. This means that you get a lot of diagonal stability when sailing downwind. The higher diagonal stability means that you can push the boat harder and reach higher performance while being safe. The Turing Outrigger has a way more straight bow and also comes with a flat deck with an integrated rub rail. As an option, we offer a rub rail here in the middle of the Outrigger on the Evolution version to protect the freeboard from scratches. I have now moved here out to the end of the wing because I want to show you a little bit about these details here. As you can see, we have some bolts here on the back end of the wing and it's because we have a stainless steel fitting that is laminated into the wing on the inside. Inside, in this stainless steel fitting, is where the turning point is for the float and the wing. And it's also where the outrigger is bolted together with the wing. If you need to access this part, you can do it through this inspection hatch. Here, you can see there is a wire. This wire is for the optional solar panel that I will show you later, and it is connected directly to the electrical system of the boat. The nylon sheaths you see down here is to make the swing wing system run way more smooth. These nylon sheaths, we recommend you to replace every 10 years approximately. Here on the side deck of the outrigger for the Dragonfly 32, we have this big standard hatch. This hatch gives you the opportunity to have way more storage to put away your extra sails, foldable bicycles, or other gear you want to bring with you. In front of the hatch, it is possible to get the optional foldable stainless steel mooring cleat. With this foldable mooring cleat, you make it easier to moor the boat when it's unfolded. The line you see here, where we also have this low friction ring, is a barber hole for the Genoa. You put the sheet for the Genoa through this low friction ring, and then you actually are able to, to trim your Genoa so that it has the right shape to get even more performance. Here on the deck of the outrigger, it is possible to get this optional solar panel. It was the one where you saw the connection at the ring that I showed you before. It is very durable and you can easily walk on the solar panel here without hurting the solar cells. The solar panel produces 50 watt and is connected directly into the batteries inside of the boat. To give you the possibility to have even more storage, we offer an optional hatch here where the solar panel is. The solar panel will then be moved aft, so you have the option for two hatches and still have the solar panel. Here on the side of the outrigger, you'll find the attachment point for the side stays. The stripe work you see here on the side of the cabin top, you can get in a matching color for the paint job on the boat. I have now moved here to the aft wing to show you some of the features here on the wing. As you can see, we have a few blocks and I would like to, to tell you what we're using them for. 
The block you see here is the sheeting point for the asymmetric Jenneker. The pulley system you see here is called a boom ring and we use it to attach to the boom so we have better possibility to trim the sail for the perfect shape. The line for the boom ring is, as you can see, led directly into the cockpit and can be handled from the winch you see here. The one you see here is the sheeting point for the Code Zero. But as you can see, we have made it with a snap shackle so you can move it and get the perfect sheeting point for the Code Zero. Here on the wing, we also have the clutch for the adjustable part of the side stay. This is led directly back to the cockpit so you can operate it from there. Here at the transom of the Dragonfly 32 outrigger, we have this swim ladder. You also find the adjustable part of the side stay. We have designed the transom of the outrigger with these two steps so it's easy to access the transom and the steps also get you close to the waterline that you see here and also great access to get in and out of the water from the boat. Right underneath the two covers, you can see we have the aft navigation lights. We have this removable helmsman seat. We have made this to give you great access to the engine room and also to give you some more space in the cockpit if needed. Also here at the transom, you can see we have this aft pulpit. It encloses the cockpit quite nice and as you can see, this boat has this backrest foaming that makes it way more comfortable to sit up against the aft pulpit. On each side, under the transom combing, we have extra lockers for fenders, lines or mooring lines. On the port side here of the transom combing, we have the controls for the cockpit shower. Right next to the cockpit shower, we have an integrated lifesaver for emergency situations. On the cockpit floor, we have this footrest or a footrail where you can rest your feet and stand against if the boat is healing. I'm standing here next to the rudder because I would like to tell you a little bit about the, the cover coat anti-fouling. As you can see, it has various colors, but when you have painted the boat with the cover coat, it is a normal cover color. We have a different color from the waterline and beneath, and that's because uh, this part on the rudder now has been brushed up after one season of sailing. But when the boat has been in the water during the season, it will be this gray color. The advantage of the cover coat anti-fouling is that you don't have to repaint the boat after every season. The cover coat here lasts for 10 years and the only thing you have to do before you're putting the boat in the water is to sand it lightly with a Scotch-Brite. As you see, the rudder here has a special shape and that's done because we want the perfect grip in the water and a full balanced boat when you are performing with the boat so you have the control at all times. Here on the Dragonfly 32 and actually in the whole Dragonfly range, we have developed a swing rudder. That means that you can pull up the rudder and you can pull down the rudder so you are able to beach the boat and go into shallow waters. You control the swing rudder with the lines you see here. We have one line to pull up the rudder and then we have one line here to pull down the rudder. When the rudder is all the way down, now the boat is unsure so I can unfortunately not show it to you, but when it's all the way down, you pull the, the, the rudder down line here and put it into this spring-loaded cleat. This spring-loaded cleat does that we have a kick-up function here on the rudder which means that if you hit the ground, this spring-loaded clamp cleat will pop up if it's exposed to a certain force. Then the spring-loaded cleat will release the rudder down line and the rudder will kick up. Then you will not experience any damages on the rudder if you hit a ground. Here in this area, we have actually sanded the rudder. So it's not a repair. We have sanded it to have a perfect fit into the rudder bracket. So this gives a perfect fit and a rudder without slack. As you can see, I will have a hard time helming the boat from the position I'm in right now. But we have this nice Yefa steering system where I actually can tilt the wheel pedestal here in five different positions. So you can see I can get it 
all the way over here to the right position where I'm sitting now. But you can also give it, get it in a higher position, in the center position. And of course, the same position as this side on the other side. This setup, of course, comes as an option. On the Dragonfly 32, you have the choice between three different steering setups. The standard boat comes with a tiller, and then you have the choice between this tilting uh, pedestal or a fixed pedestal with a bigger wheel. All three setups can of course be built with an integrated autopilot. Regardless which setup you go with, you'll still have a very fine balanced boat where you can helm the boat with only two fingers on the wheel or the tiller and have a big smile on your face because you have full control over the boat. I would like to introduce you to the engine room here on the Dragonfly 32. The Dragonfly 32 is born and comes standard with an inboard engine. It's a 21 horsepower Yanmar, but before I can open the engine room, I have to remove this extra seat, removable seat. And then I can open the hatch here. And as you can see, it's quite spacious down here, so you actually have space enough to, to sit around the engine if you want to do some service. On the Dragonfly 32, as explained earlier uh, from the floor, the engine is moved quite far aft here in the boat. This is done both to get the better flow from the, from the propeller on the rudder, but also to keep the smell and noise away from the living area inside of the boat. The engine room and the living area are separated by a big glass fiber bulkhead. Here inside the engine room, you will also find the, the diesel heater, you can find the warm water boiler, and you can also see we have the autopilot here on the wheel system. The autopilot is also connected directly to the rudder. The engine room is very well insulated, which means that you will experience less noise from the engine when you're motoring. Here on my right, you can see we have the engine controls, which means that you can easily maneuver the boat, operating the engine while you're helming the boat. I'm sitting here because I would like to show you the sail drive here on the Dragonfly 32. As you can see, it's a very normal sail drive, but what's quite nice is this gory propeller. It's a standard feature for the Dragonfly 32. It's very effective because it actually has two positions. It has a position for the forward gear and a reverse gear. And we're not using the propeller and sailing by sails. It falls into a neutral position, so we have less drag when not using the propeller. As you probably already have noticed, we have the propeller and the sail drive here quite far aft in the boat. We've done that to have the flow from the propeller closer to the rudder, so you have a more direct flow around the rudder, and you have a direct control when maneuvering the boat in the harbor. The deepest point of the boat is in the middle and under the center board. And in this position with the sail drive, it means that you can dry out the boat without hurting the sail drive. I have now moved to the deck to show you some of the features here on the deck. Here in the front, you see we have a, a, a quite big hatch for the front cabin to give some more light and to give you the possibility to ventilate inside of the main cabin. Behind the forward hatch, you can see we have the optional solar panel. It charges 50 watts as the other one I told about earlier. And behind the solar panel here, you can see we have an, a hatch for the heads to also give you the possibility to ventilate and bring in some more light. Next to the hatch for the heads here, you can see we have the mast base. As you probably can see, we have a, a rig that stands on the deck and in the mast base here. And all lines coming from the mast, so all halyards are lit through the deck organizers here, directly back to the cockpit to handle and operate all the halyards from there. Here on the side, you can see we have two genera tracks. These are adjustable, so you're able to trim the, uh, the genera to the perfect shape, but also to trim the genera for, for a reef one or reef two. Behind the mast base, we have a standard flush mounted hatch, also quite big to give you the possibility to get more light and ventilate the main cabin. Integrated in the eyebrow here, 
we have a handrail to give you the possibility to walk around safely on the boat. The lines you see here coming through the mast base are the control lines for the center board, also led back to the cockpit. On the deck of the Dragonfly 32, we have a lot of anti-skid. It is painted into the mold and gets out of the mold like this. This means that we can keep the same color, the same structure, even after years of wear and tear. I would now like to tell you a little bit about the trampolines here on the boat. It's made out of a very strong material and lasts for approximately 12 to 15 years. In sunny parts of the world, you can experience that you have to restitch the, the trampoline every five to six years, depending on how much UV it has been exposed to. Otherwise, the trampoline here is a great area for sunbathing, having a good time, rigging your extra sails, great space for working with your extra sails, uh, but also gives you the access to the, to the hatch and the, and the storage in the outriggers. Please have in mind that the boat more or less sails flat most of the time. That means that you can use this huge area while you're sailing with the boat. I would now like to show you how to operate this ringling system here on the Dragonfly 32. Before you start the procedure, it is important to pull in the bowsprit and to take off the safety wire. When that's done, you pull on the fold outline to take some of the pressure of the, of the clutches. But before you do that, it's important that you open and release the clutch for the adjustable part of the side stay. As you can see, I've, I have done here. Now you take some of the pressure of the clutches. Then you can open the clutches here underneath the cockpit combing, release the fold out line, and then you can see that the trampoline is getting loose. Then you put on the fold in line. And now you're ready to fold in just by pressing the button. And now you can see there's coming a mark here on the line that indicates that the boat is now folded in. You close the clutches. And that's it. I would now like to show you how to unfold the Dragonfly 32. But before I do so, I would like to notice that the boat is on shore right now and when it's in the water, it's actually even easier to fold out because of the buoyancy of the outriggers. Before you start, you prepare the fold out line on the winch. You open the clutches underneath and then you just push the button here for the e-winch.
And now we look after the mark here on the fold outline. And here it is. And that indicates that you're now done folding out the boat. Then you close the clutches underneath the cockpit combing. You put on the safety cable. As you can see, the fold out procedure can be done within a few minutes, but it can of course also be done manually on the winches. I would now like to tell you a little bit about the navigation instruments here inside the cockpit in the Dragonfly 32. Here right next to me you can see we have the optional display for the autopilot I showed you before inside the engine room. You can see you have the necessary buttons for navigation with the autopilot. If you decide not to have the display here for the autopilot and not ordering the optional autopilot, you can easily have a multi-display here instead. To tell a little bit about the rest of the navigation instruments, you can see we have here on the cabin top, we have three multi-displays. You can of course choose to only have one or two or none at all. And here we have the uh, GPS. This is the position for the GPS if you choose this uh, movable uh, pedestal or uh, with, the, with the tiller. If you choose the fixed pedestal, you have the choice between this position or having the GPS here on top of the pedestal. But the only thing you really need to navigate with a boat is a compass and you find it underneath the step here and it comes standard with the Dragonfly 32. On the Dragonfly 32, you can see we have a traveler. It's a great trim option for reaching or going downwind. It is easy to operate with the lines coming out of the cleats here. So it's an endless system and therefore it runs very smooth. Here on the Traveler you of course also find our main sheet. You operate the main sheet on the winches you see here on the transom combing on each side. The Traveler is also a structural part of the design. It takes up some of the forces from the wings and the folding me mechanism together with the internal bulkhead. Underneath each seat here in the cockpit, we have a cockpit locker. This is for fenders, mooring lines or a toolbox or whatever you would like to, to bring with you. The companionway hatches have their own storage inside the other locker. On each side here on the cockpit combing, we have this optional winch. This is used for the optional barber hole and also for the boom vane. Here on top of the cabin, we have two big winches. On this Dragonfly 32, they are both electrical, but standard the boat comes without electrical winches, but winches in the same size. If you want to have one electrical winch, we recommend you to place it here on the starboard side where you're able to handle both folding lines or both sides for the folding operation and also the main halyard. And of course you can have two electrical winches where you also can use them for the Genoa sheet. In front of the two big winches here, you see we have all the clutches for all the halyards and line coming back from the, uh, from the mast. From here you can also do the whole reefing procedure if needed. From here on the cabin top, you also find the control lines for the centerboard. On this side, we have the centerboard down line, which actually goes into a spring-loaded clamp cleat. So if it is exposed to a certain force, it will pop up and release the line. So the centerboard float into the centerboard case. On the other side, you'll find a clutch for the, uh, the board up line. If you want the centerboard to stay in position when you are getting the boat on shore or going into shallow waters. Here on the sides of the cockpit seats, you can see we have two rope pockets. These are to organize all the lines coming from the mast. Over here, we have the mandatory manual bilge pump. Here on the side of the cockpit combing, you'll find the attachment point for a lifeline. We have one in the same position on the other side of the cockpit combing. Here in the cockpit of the Dragonfly 32, we have these optional lights to light up the floor of the cockpit to give a cozy feeling when you're sitting here inside of the cockpit in a summer evening. To close the boat, we have two companionway hatches. These are stored under the cockpit seat in the cockpit locker. And then we close it with this sliding hatch. 
Here inside of the transom combing, we have the propane locker. Here on the transom, you can see we have two covers. The one here is for the diesel fuel and the diesel tank. And the one you see here is for the emergency tiller. I would now like to show you how to set up the spray hood here on the Dragonfly 32. As you can see, it's very easy to set up and you can do it within a few minutes. The spray hood here is mainly for the windshield because the boat is very dry to sail, but because it's sailing fast, it's nice to have this possibility to sit in the shelter for the wind. We have four fittings here on the aft pulpit. These fittings are for the Bimini. So it's an option here on the Dragonfly 32 to get some protection from the sun. We have developed the spray hood, the enclosure and the Bimini in a way so you can have all three on board at the same time. You can also choose all three in a variety of different colors so it matches the boat. Here on the Dragonfly 32, we can connect a tent here to the spray hood to give full enclosure of the cockpit. It's already ready here on the transom of the cockpit. I would now like to demonstrate how to connect the spray hood and set up the tent. So as you can see, it's very easy to set up the whole tent in connection with the spray hood so you have a fully enclosement around the cockpit. The cockpit enclosure is able to open on both sides, as you see here, and also in the back so you're able to ventilate inside the enclosure. With the connection of the spray hood and the enclosement here, it's quite spacious so you can sit here even in the rain and have a good time with their family and friends. I would now like to demonstrate how to set up the cockpit table here inside of the Dragonfly 32. As you can see here, it's very easy to set up and you have great space here for sitting four persons around the cockpit table. You can move it around so you still have access through the cockpit so you can walk around or if you have to do something uh, with, the, with the lines coming back from the mast. So, a great setup. I have now moved inside here of the Dragonfly 32. And in this boat, the interior is made out of elm wood, but the boat, the Dragonfly 32, comes standard with a lighter wood sword in maple. The floor inside here of the Dragonfly 32 in the main cabin comes in a standard white gel coat finish. Then you have the choice between a carpet in various colors and in this boat we have the elm wood floor. We have a lot of LED lights here inside of the cabin to give you a more spacious feeling when you are inside the boat. Here on the cabin top you can see we have quite large windows. And when we sit high here in the sofa it gives us a great view over the boat and we can see what's going on outside the boat and it brings in a lot of light into the main cabin. Here on top of the cabin we have this large hatch, which also brings in a lot of light from, from above and gives you the opportunity to ventilate the main cabin. For the hatch, we also have this mosquito net that makes it possible to ventilate the boat and still have the closure from the hatch. But we also have this roll-up line here for privacy. For even more privacy, we also have curtains here for the side windows. Under the seats, both here and here, in both sides, there's plenty of storage. For more storage, we also have these shelves here, and we have a cabinet here, here, and in the same position on the other side. The seats in this side are able to transform into a berth. I would now like to show you how it's done.
I'm standing here because I would like to show the headroom here inside of the main cabin in the Dragonfly 32. And for your reference, I am 1 meter and 92 centimeters tall. And right here next to me in the center of the main cabin, we have this large table. And as you can see, we have a quite high seat here in the starboard side of the boat. And to make it more comfortable to sit here, we have this hidden footrest. So it's more comfortable to sit here with the table. With this large table, you're able to sit here six persons around the table and have a good time. Here underneath the table, we have the centerboard trunk. It's completely sealed off and you have the control lines in the cockpit. Here underneath the table in the center, we have a 60 liter compressor fridge. Now I have moved inside of the front cabin here in the Dragonfly 32. As you can see, it's quite spacious and it easily fits two adults. It is two meters long, so there's also quite some space for a taller person. For your reference, I am one meter and 92 centimeters. Here in the front cabin, you can see we have a shelf here and we have two spotlights here on the side so you can read a book. And we have two port lights here in each side. As I told earlier, it is an option and you can see, you can see here that we can get a a roller blind for privacy and here in top we have also a bigger hatch so you can, are able to ventilate and also give some more light and a more spacious feeling here inside the front cabin. For the hatch up here you can get the optional mosquito net and roller blind for privacy. It is of course possible to order power sockets as you see here above me. And here in the corner, we also have a reading light. Here in the front cabin, we also have a sliding door for privacy. Here at the entrance, we also have these two cabinets for extra storage. Now I'm sitting inside of the heads here. And as you can see, you got all you need. Here underneath the, the window, you can see we have storage for all, all your toiletries. And on the inside, you also saw that we have a, a, a power socket. For the window up here, we have a, a curtain for, for privacy. And up here, we have this hatch to give you the possibility to get some light in from above and also to ventilate the heads. The tap you see here has two functions. Of course, it's a tap, but it's also a pull-out shower. So you are able to shower here inside the heads. With the combination of the inboard engine and the warm water boiler, you are able to take a warm shower here inside the heads. When you are showering here inside the heads, all the water runs down here in the bills underneath me and you can pump the water out with this drain pump that you can activate here so it runs out of the boat. Now I'm standing in the kitchen area here of the Dragonfly 32 and as you can see I have plenty of headroom when standing here in the kitchen area. Here on the port side of the kitchen area we have a worktop. Underneath we have storage for your charts. Underneath the worktop we have two drawers for cutlery. Underneath the drawers, you have even more storage for your kitchen gear. Behind the worktop, you find additional storage. Above the worktop here, you can see we have cabinets also for the kitchen gear you would like to bring with you. Underneath the cabinets, you can see we have the control for the diesel heater. Right next to it, you can see we can turn the lights on and off. The diesel heater has three outlets. One in the front cabin, one in the heads, and one right here in the main cabin. Up here, you can see we have a switchboard for all the electrical components. Right next to the switchboard, we have this solar panel regulator that takes care of the power coming from the solar panels. Underneath the solar panel regulator, 
you can see we have this 12 volt power socket. The stairs you see here in the middle are actually able to move to give you greater access into the aft cabin. So you can slide it in this position for this greater access into the aft cabin, but you can also use it for privacy in the aft cabin. Here on the starboard side of the kitchen area, we have a sink where we also have a tap for fresh water, both cold and warm water, and we have a tap for salt water. Right next to it, we have this propane stove. And right above it, we have a propane oven. Behind the sink and the propane stove, we have additional storage. And above that, we have even more storage for a kitchen gear. Down here, you'll find a drawer for cutlery. Right next to the drawer, we have additional storage for a kitchen gear. And in here, you also find the valves for the stove and the oven. We have an integrated garbage bin. Here above, you can see we have the display and the controls for the audio system inside the main cabin and also in the cockpit. Underneath the floor, you find additional storage. Now I have moved inside here in the aft cabin of the Dragonfly 32. And as you can see, it's a quite spacious. And there's plenty of room for, for two people to stay here overnight. And it's about two meters long, so it fits a tall person like me. Here behind me, there is a nice backrest, so easily can sit here and read a book or watch a movie. Behind me, you can also see we have an emergency hatch. It's mandatory due to the CE homologation, but it's quite nice too because it brings in a lot of light and you, we make it able to ventilate the, the aft cabin. And there is, of course, a roller blind here for the escape hatch. On the opposite side of where I'm sitting, we have two cabinets for clothes or extra storage. And above, we have the storage for the cockpit table. And in the corner in here, we have a fuse panel and the main switch. I hope you enjoyed the tour here on the Dragonfly 32 with Peter. As you have seen, he knows the boat uh, very well, or let's say extremely well. Again, as you see, this is uh, not just a 32 foot boat. This is so much more than just a 32 foot boat. It's so much bigger, powerful, and there's so many things you can do with this. You can go offshore long distance and uh, the boat can basically take you anywhere you like. Just your dreams is the limitation. If you need any uh, further information, please don't hesitate to uh, contact us here at the yard or our dealer network. And um, we hope to see you on Grand Fly someday. <laughs>